Hello fellow YouTubers and welcome to AdStrats. Windows 10 is finally out and I'm already running it on my tablet as you can see on the left and on my desktop machine on the right. Now for those of you who are not sure whether to upgrade, don't want to risk or lose your data, things like that, there's a great software out there to make a backup of your data and of your entire hard drive or partition and it's called Macrium Reflect Free. Now, the free obviously denotes the free edition and the software itself is called Macrium Reflect. As you see on the main screen here in front of you, that's the web page and let's have a look. The features all shown on the website. So it's very easy to see what sort of edition you would need. Now, I would highly encourage you to go for the home edition. It includes much more features and at the same time, you know, if you like the software, you should really gone and buy it however at the same time the free edition is as as it sounds free there's no limit on time used there's few limitations here and there but for the purpose of this tutorial and for those of you who just simply want to back up the whole hard drive onto somewhere else whether it's external hardware usb stick network drive you name it and you just want to tinker around with your pc without obviously losing your data this is a software for you and that's the only reason i'm using it because sometimes when new software comes out i want to try something new i want to obviously back up my machine before i do that there's various tools on windows that allow you to do that however at the same time this software takes snapshot of your entire drive backs it somewhere safe and you can restore it later so that's great now Let's have a look on how to use it. So first, obviously, you need to download it. There's a download button here. When it's downloaded, you have it reflect DL. So it says, do you want to allow it? Yes. And here it is. So free trial, free slash trial. So we choosing free, full software. If you have a license key, go on and enter it here. Um, and run installer after downloading. Yeah, that's all fine. And download. And it says Windows P components needed, 463 megabytes. Yeah. Um, what that is basically Windows P, it's, it's like a Windows basic shell. Um, when you create a rescue CD or USB um, or DVD for that matter, when it boots up, it needs to use some sort of system. And what the software is using is Windows system. So basically you can boot up, um, view the folders on your PC still and work on the software without actually booting it into Windows directly. But about that a little bit later. So first, obviously, you need to download the software and install it. And uh, once it's downloaded, I'm going to resume and I'm going to show you through the installation steps. Okay, so download is finished and next you see this message, so obviously you go next. There's not much choice here. And once again, next. Do you want to accept the license terms? So obviously read through the license terms, guys, um, if you have time. And have a look if that applies to you. I accept. Next. There's the key. Next. Would you like to register your free copy of MicroReflect? Nope, not at the moment anyway. Next install for all users if you want to and next again install and that's it software is installed so you can close it down and there's your download file here on the pc so close that close all the windows for the moment and let's try to start the software and see what it looks like so here's once again registration if you want to remind yourself a bit later or don't remind me it's up to you and that's it, as it says, uh, as it says there, um, Macrium Reflect free edition for non-commercial use. So once again, if you're using it for your business, make sure you purchase the right edition. So this is my drive here. I'm running Crucial um, MX 100 256 uh, gigabyte SSD, and it's denoted here. So we have system reserve system and another partition right here. If you want to clone the disks, you can click clone the disk and you can insert another disk basically to clone to. So the reason I'm showing you that is if you have, if you're upgrading, let's say from hard drive to SSD and your primary disk is hard drive, you plugged in your SSD into your computer so we can, you can see it through Explorer and everything. And next thing what you want to do is you want to move your data from hard drive onto the SSD. So what you would need to do is clone this disk, 
This is your local disk as a source, which is fine. Destination, you would see your destination disk or disks available and you can choose and just go next and through the options there. I don't have another hard drive or solid state drive at the moment in, so there's no option for me there. However, I can image this disk, so I can click image this disk and it says, okay, this is the disk I want to image. I don't tinker with any settings because what I want to do is I want to make a copy of the entire SSD that I have on this system and back it up somewhere else. By the way, guys, this is Windows 10, but it would work exactly the same on Windows 7 and Windows 8. I haven't, unfortunately, tried on Windows, I don't know, XP or 2000, anything like that, so I can't comment on these, but I doubt this software would work on them. However, I might be wrong. Now, um, for the destination folder, so what you could use is your network drive, or what I prefer to use is something like these yokes, which is um, Kingston DTR 3.0 Data Traveler um, drives. They're USB drives and they're 3.0, they're fast drives. And this particular one, for instance, is 32 gigs, which will be enough to store the image. So I'm gonna put it in. Okay, so the drive is in and the drive is H, so I, I put it in as H. And that's it. I don't tinker with any settings. Next, I usually deselect here. I don't want to incremental backups or anything like that. All I want to do is a full backup and that's it, no scheduling at the moment. So next, all the information is there. If you want to go through it, it's up to you and finish. Do you want to run it now? Yes. And that's it. All this is gonna do is backup entire hard drive or solid state drive onto the drive that you've chosen. Obviously, if you have your hard drive with games and applications and everything installed and it's taken, I don't know, 200 gigabytes, you wouldn't be able to fit it all on 32 gigabytes uh, USB stick. So be careful and choose carefully there what size disk or USB drive you need to use. Um, and that's it. So as you see, the progress is here. It's showing me what's, what is it doing and I'm just going to let it run. And once it's finished, I'm going to show you the options for restoring your drive. So for instance, if you messed it up or you still in, can boot into windows and you want to restore your partitions, I'm going to show you how to do that. So about that next. Okay. And that's it. The image is complete. So it's on my USB stick right here. So I can put it away for the moment and that's going to be my backup on this 32 gig USB stick. Now, next what I would like to do obviously is to make sure I can restore it even if my computer doesn't boot into Windows. So I go to other tasks, create rescue media, and this is where it would say to me, you know, what kind of rescue media and things it is. So this one is allowing me to choose the PE version. So for instance, Windows PE 3.0 Rescue Media uses Windows 7 kernel. And this is best choice for Windows 7, Server 2000 R2 or earlier systems. Now, if you are using Windows 8 or newer, you can go to Windows PE 4.0 Rescue Media or even the latest Windows PE 5.0, which uses Windows 8.1. So USB 3.0 and all that is enabled. And since all, all PCs and tab, tablets and laptops in my home at the moment are Windows 8 or newer, that's fine for me. I'm gonna choose the newest one, click OK, and click Next. So Next is gonna to say to me that these are the drivers it's gonna install. If you want to, to update them, you can go through updates and things like that. I'm not gonna tinker with that once again. I just want a standard one next, architecture. No. Here's an important thing. So if you choose 64-bit, you can use this USB to restore only 64-bit system. And the reason I'm saying this is because the tablet over here is 32-bit, but the PC is 64. So if I'm gonna recreate a 64-bit um, stick from my PC, then obviously I'll be able to use it only on my PC and not on other machines that are 32-bit. So something to be aware of. But once again, guys, if you're working on the system, if you're creating this USB on the system where you're gonna be restoring it later, it doesn't matter, just create what it is. And in my case, it's 64-bit. Don't need to do anything here. Just go next. And that's just creating the image onto USB drive. And 
I'm gonna be able to use that later on when I need to boot it up and I'm gonna boot it up for you guys and show you how it all works so see you in a minute just before I run away here's the final dialog box so I want to choose USB device or I can also go for the ISO image file up to you I'm gonna go with the USB and click finish and it's gonna copy the files onto USB so that's the final step just give me a minute there And not more than 10 seconds later, I have it created. It's not that big of a file. Let's have a look actually. There you go. And if I click on properties, only 251 megabytes. That's all it takes. So if you have a USB stick of, I don't know, one gigabyte from somewhere lying around, that'll do fine. And that's it. Let's try to boot it up and show you how it looks like when I go into buyers and things like that. Now, before we boot up, we obviously need to make sure that we are booting up from the right device. Now, guys, for booting from USB or whatever else you are booting from CD or something like that, make sure you read your motherboard or PC manual to have a look how that all works. And what's up simple as that. Now, because it's USB 3.0 device and not a CD, it would be much, much faster. Even USB 2.0, your old USB memory stick for one gigabyte or something like that would actually boot much faster than anything else so first what I want to do is find my image file now at the moment it's on this USB stick and obviously it's not in PC so I'm gonna put that stick into the computer and go browse for an image file this PC and here is removal disk G there we go now the reason we have multiple files here, as you see, there's six or seven files, is because I was using uh, FAT32 uh, file, file system on the USB stick. So ideally, you'd want to format it as uh, NTFS, but that doesn't matter. The only reason it split it is because it's of the system limitation. Um, once the file goes bigger than four gigabytes, it splits into more and more and more and more. Um, but that doesn't matter. I'm just going to select the first one, so 0, 0. Do restore image. And I'm technically, because I backed off this onto USB stick, I'm going to restoring exactly the same. But that's fine. I'm going to do it anyway. So once you selected your image to restore, you selected the drive to restore. Now, in my case, I only have one drive, so it's easy enough. You can also click verify image, which I highly recommend you guys uh, to do. Um, two things that are very, very important um, in, in this procedure. Even though the software is free and works great every time I used it, I would still recommend you to do two things. One, verify the image. So you can go click and it's going to verify the image um, for you. So you don't need to do anything about it. And Second thing, what you would need to do, at least my recommendation, what you would need to do is make sure that your bootable um, CD, USB or whatever you created works as well. Because last thing you want to do is, I don't know, mess up your computer, have very nice and handy SSD or external SSD hard drive or USB or whatever it is to use and with your image there and you're ready to use it to restore your PC back to its health and you cannot do it because your bootable media has failed whether it's a scratch CD, whether it's a failed USB stick or whatever are the reasons so be very careful and obviously the third thing there as I showed you before was um, when you're creating the restore CD or USB make sure that you are creating the right one so you have 32 bits, you have 64 bits and all that now, normally the software will choose for you, and if you, you if you are creating the USB for the computer that you're using, you'll be fine. At the same time, if you're using 32-bit computer and you want to create a memory stick or, or a CD for 64-bit, you can have some slight issues. Um, however, I was able to create a recovery CD or, or DVD on 32-bit system and run it as 32-bit, restore the files, and that was fine. Um, but that's all beyond what you need to know. Main thing is make sure you back it up on the right drive, so whether it's external, USB, um, DVD even, or something like that, or, or hard drive, whether it's an Ethernet drive, whatever. 
any location you want to back it up. So make sure you back it up to the correct lo location, not the same PC, because essentially you'll be destroying the hard drive later on and rewriting it to recover it. Uh, well, not destroying, maybe poor choice of uh, words, just erasing the data. Um, make sure you have the right bootable media as well. So make sure when you created it, you tried it and, and you boot into something like this and it works on your PC. The rest is history, guys. Simple as that. So if you're installing Windows 7, Windows 8 or something like that and you just want to maybe keep that old Windows installation somewhere on the site in case things go wrong, do it. Back it up with the software. It's free. It's very easy to use. Um, no pain at all and all will work fine. So I'm going to just allow the software to verify the image first because I haven't done that yet. Once it's done, I'm going to show you quickly how to restore your drive back to its health and we're going to be finished. So stay tuned. Okay, so image verified, everything's okay. So that's fine. Both steps taken in one go. I have the image and I have the bootable drive. Everything works fine. So next thing would be to restore it. So I've selected to which drive, which image, restore image. Once again, this is just confirmed source, G drive, so my USB stick, destination, MBR disk one, crucial SSD. Yeah, that's correct. Once again, you can see that here you have verify image before restore. So just before restore, you can also click here and just make sure it's verified. I already did that. so. I go next. These are the details. Yeah, that's fine. Finish. Warning. The following drives will be original. Well, of course, because what I'm doing essentially is I'm going to be destroying all the data on the drive. So erasing all the data and overwriting with the new data, which is going to be this image here. So yeah, continue, of course, because I want my system back to normal. And that's it. It's going to go through the process now going to go through all these files on my USB drive and going to restore that onto the main machine drive here and once it's done I'm going to boot up and everything will be hunky dory so so first what I need to do is obviously wait until that finishes once it does I will show you what's the final message there and we'll boot into the system I'm going to show you that everything is fine and Windows is working as it should so stay tuned Okay, restart complete, 10 minutes, yep, that's all it takes. Click OK, click Close, and next, I'm going to just close it down, and the PC reboots. Now, I'm not going to allow the PC to reboot, because I want to switch it off first, and take out the USB drives, so make sure it doesn't boot from my USB drive, and then start again. So as you see, the restart is now complete, I'm back in Windows, and essentially, I've just restored my drive from one of these USB sticks. Now, the reason I'm saying from one of these, because one of them I used for backing up my data onto, another one I used as a boot drive. Now, at the same time, you could be a bit smart about that than myself, and you could make sure that you create your USB boot drive first, and then back it up on exactly the same drive. So what, what that would mean is that you have one drive for booting up from it, and from restoring the image from the same drive as well. But anyway, guys, that's about it. So once again, Macrim Reflect, free edition. It allows you to back up and restore your main drive. And that's what I use it for. And that's my recommendation for you in case you want to migrate to maybe Windows 10 that's currently out. And before migrating, you want to just make sure you have some sort of a backup that you can come back to and that's exactly what the software will allow you to do so yeah guys thanks for watching if you like the video click the like button as always any comments questions feel free to leave them at the comment section down below and stay tuned for more videos to come have a nice day